So let, let's stay in this symptomatic space for a bit. You know, we, we, we know that both sets of guidelines, we talk about uh, whether they're symptomatic and, and, and their ECOG status. So uh, again, looking, so, so Ken, I know you guys um, utilize NCCN. So in the, in the symptomatic patient with M1 CRPC, we know that what has category one evidence is docetaxel. But then the new kit on the block, approved uh, May of last year, is radium-223. Some, some thoughts, insights. Uh, I know Oliver's got extensive experience with it as well, I think, as you know, some of us do. Is it, is it um, was approaching approval, uh, I went to our two big hospitals that I, that I go to and to talked to the radiation department and the radiation oncology department, again, fostering that, that relationship in a multidisciplinary form to say, look, We've got all these patients with a lot of advanced disease with bone pain, and so you know we we set up a program basically that inter referred, and so we as soon as basically it got approved, we hit the ground running and, and started treating patients immediately, and it was very impressive. We found great symptomatic relief early on uh, with very low toxicity. So I think that was that you know it's it's the best best of both worlds. It worked well, low toxicity, and I think and patients did great with it. Mm -hmm. So Oliver. I know you were very active in the Alsimka trial. Just for a review for the audience, tell us a little bit about radium-223, mechanism of action, its approval, but really more importantly, how it differentiates, why it differs from the previous radiopharmaceuticals that urologists have used in the past. Yeah, great question. Or we're afraid uh, of. The, and, and, and perhaps you should have been afraid <laughs> of. So, so first of all, it really is a new class of radiopharmaceutical. It's an alpha particle. Now, you know, the last time I thought about alpha particles was probably that, you know, 1973, and I was struggling in physics somewhere. But uh, alpha particles are big particles. They're two protons, two neutrons. And they're advantageous because they have a very high energy but a very short radius that they'll actually travel through the body. So radium is a natural calcium emetic. It was found to be a calcium emetic a long time ago. You inject it into the bloodstream, five minute injection. It goes throughout the body and then it's taken up in areas where there are osteoblastic metastasis because it's very similar to a bone scan in its uptake. If you could just visualize a therapeutic bone scan in your mind, you could visualize radium. But importantly, it's not a beta particle. The beta particles are electrons of the strontium and samarium, much more energetic and much more distance traveling and they hit normal amount of poietic tissue. Turns out the alpha particle only goes about a hundred microns or so. So it deposits in the bone in the osteoblastic metastasis, goes about a hundred microns and it's literally like a little nuclear bomb just kind of blowing up right there. And the side effect profile is excellent um, in the Alsimka trial, which was the phase three. The rate of significant myelosuppression was 7% grade 3, 4 thrombocytopenia, mainly late developing. It's given as six doses, given one dose every four weeks, calibrated on a basis of weight, and it has been shown to have palliative effects and most importantly to prolong survival as well. So the indications very briefly are in the symptomatic bone metastatic patient without visceral metastasis or bulky lymph nodes. Because remember, it's a bone targeted agent, but you prolong survival and have palliation as well with minimal side effects. So it's really an interesting new agent. Uh, I think we're gonna be doing more clinical trials with this one for a long time to come. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the big thing for the urology audience at least, probably the audience in general, is that I think our uh, view of radiopharmaceuticals is pretty much been one, it's, it, it's palliative only, uh, with tremendous side effect profile. And I think we gave it, you, you gave a one-time dose and that was it. I think, it's, I think it is important to understand that, that radium-223 or Zofigo is, it has a survival benefit, which, which to me is actually pretty remarkable given the fact that you're only targeting bone. You know, when we obviously know that there's, got, there's probably some element of micrometastases in, in, in soft tissue. Uh, 
as Oliver said, it, it has a survival benefit, so it should be viewed as a therapeutic agent. It's not just for palliation. It has a survival benefit, favorable side effect profile, as well as, you know, it, it does have an SRE benefit. You know, as we know, during the trial, uh, DMAB was not readily available, so we don't know what that interaction's going to be with, uh, with uh, uh, denosumab. Uh, and it's, um, you know, really has, does pretty well for palliation in terms of the reduction of the narcotics used by the patients. So, again, you know, in interesting agent. Um,